Hanukkah and Yosef. The commentators are troubled when the story tells us that the brothers stood before Joseph and they recognized him and he made himself foreign. Vagit Nakir, he made reflexively, he made himself as if he were not known to them. He made himself a stranger. The commentators wonder how could Joseph allow himself such a deep lack of compassion for his father and for his brothers. Here his brothers placing themselves before Joseph. They're starving. They've made their way down to Egypt in order to procure some kind of nourishment for themselves. And there they stand before the most powerful man they know with their children and families' lives on the line. And Joseph pulls away from revealing who he really is. And the commentators call Joseph into question. Where is your compassion, Joseph? Where is your love? Where is your humanity where is your bigness joseph they call him a nokem nachash a snake that revenges but is it so wild to imagine that someone who had been so deeply instrumentalized refused to reveal who he really was maybe he couldn't figure out a way to come out of the mask he wore reflexively in front of those who continue to look at him in a particular way. And even now, 22 years later, he made himself unfamiliar, might have been a way he always was with them. I love the message of Hanukkah as a tikkun for Joseph. I love the message of Hanukkah as a fixing of that place. And it couldn't come at a better time here in our society, in our culture at large. Human beings can never be reduced to human doings. But lest we think that it's something that happens only in certain parts of the country or in certain parts of the world, we are reminded, even in the Chanukiah, that one of them becomes an instrument. Even one of them becomes an instrument, the Shamash. So we dance between both of these places and we remind ourselves as often as possible the teaching of the Baal Shem Tov, the great and holy Baal Shem Tov, who when asked what his life's mission was, his purpose in the world, he said was to create holy eyes. We invite ourselves tonight to do a meditation not only on the Chanukiah, but on the people who are sitting with us at tonight's Friday night meal, or tomorrow morning's Shabbat service, or it's Saturday evening or Sunday, to ask ourselves in any given moment, are the lights before me means to my ends, or are they ends in and of themselves? What a good question to ask. Is the person driving me to work, making my breakfast? Is the person who serves in some way as a shamash, as an instrument in my life, can I be the one who lifts them up? Even if they are instrumental in some way to something in my life, might I be the one who meditates upon their being and say, you know, in lana wishus the hishtamesh bahem, I cannot reduce you. I will not reduce you. This is the challenge, I think, of Hanukkah. And maybe, and this is the last thing we come in for landing, Maybe this is a deeper meaning of why we put a Chanukiah in the window or next to the mezuzah on the doorpost because the connection between the Chanukiah and the exodus from Egypt is absolutely inextricably interwoven. Leaving slavery meant that no human being could ever say, I will reduce you to a slave. And we put a Chanukiah next to the mezuzah to say the same thing in the window too, to say to everyone in the world, when we walk by this window, in this house, in this heart, in these eyes, there is someone with whom you are safe. There is someone with whom you are safe. I will see you as God sees you. I will see you as God sees you. That's the work. That's the promise. That's the practice. 
It's something that we should aspire towards, and we as a community should demand from our members, from all those who walk through our doors, wherever they might be, and it's something that we as a country should remember is the great hope of what this country offers. It's citizens, those who live here, you are safe. We will protect you from objectification. We will protect you from commodification. You will never be reducible to a number on a page or to a cog in the wheel. I'd be proud to be an American like that. And I pledge an allegiance to that. Please rise.